Well, can I just say, RJ Mitty, two things. Thank you very much for coming on this Enable. And thank you very much for your patience. I should point out, I am 19 minutes late to our interview. You, you're fine. I, I, as we were talking about earlier, thought I was 30 minutes late to our interview. <laughs> I signed into the Zoom. I signed into the Zoom and it said 6.30 my time. And I'm like, it's 7 o'clock. Oh, I'm no. late. Oh, God. Well, we can both apologize to each other. Um, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Usually, I host this with uh, a guy called Dylan Alcott. He's a bit of a superstar. Uh, he's a, like a seven-time World Grand Slam Paralympic champion. Um, so you're stuck with the the B-grade guest as he flies over to do Wimbledon and the, the French Open. Um, oh, amazing. But we should point out, uh, we're talking to you because you've got a movie called Triumph that comes out on DVD and digital platforms on July 7th. So people can now watch it. Um, this this movie for you, uh, it's it's playing in a space you've lived your whole life. How did you feel about it when you heard about this role, which is based on a true story? Yeah, I, I was very excited um, when I first got the script and and was told the story of um, of a young man who um, has a dream to to wrestle to not just not and not, when I say wrestle, a lot of people think of like like WWE, like yeah, off the yeah. mat and lucha libre and all that. No, th this is Greco style, Roman style wrestling, um, and it was a unique story of this man who wanted to live a very different life than society wanted him to live mm. and the original story um of this man named michael coffee who wrote this story about his memoirs and kind of dreams that he had for himself and what he wanted to achieve um and, and as i read it it resonated in so many ways um he has cerebral palsy much uh severe more severe than me um but still a lot of the similar challenges um, that we face together and it just resonated well, well. And I just thought it was one of the stories that needed to be told and needed to get out there so people could, could hear it. And, and it resonates with a lot of people. This isn't just some like one off story. This is a very common occurrence in real life that yeah. I think we never see. So you, you both have CP and you know, short and Correct. considerable palsy. Um, did you find out that Michael, was like, oh, it has to be RJ Mitty. I mean, there's no other actor who can play this role. Or were you auditioning with other people who had cerebral palsy? Was it a was it a fight to get this role? Um, yes and no. Uh, there was other people that were up for the role, but when I when I uh, when they presented it to me and I, I read it and I was like, I, I want it. Can I have it? And it was like, yeah. Like, and, game over. Game over. Done. Uh, slam dunk that. Um, and, and we just had so much in common that we hit it off and were able to grow from there. And, um, you know, this project we've been working on for about six years now, yeah. almost seven years since I started this project. And we've had ups and downs and we have pulled it up together by its bootstraps and really like made it happen. You know, yeah. so many of these movies never see the light of day. And we're very honored to be able to just get it out there. Let's go back to your story. Um, we're a disability podcast. We like to talk and and make um, disability comfortable for every single person. Uh, you have cerebral palsy, but like you said, Michael's story, he has a more severe CP. Uh, can you talk yeah. about your life growing up and your diagnosis and what it was like being a kid as RJ Mitty? <laughs> Something like that. Um, yeah, so I was diagnosed at age three with cerebral palsy, uh, spastic um, cerebral palsy. So my muscles constantly kind of tighten and convulse. Uh, but for the first three years of my life, I wasn't able to be diagnosed. Um, they knew I had something. They could see something with how I walked and how I, I would I would grab things because my, my left hand, um, I'm a little sun, it's a a little too white for this yeah. this lighting um but um <laughs> but so my, my hand on my left side and my left side primarily is is um affected uh and they, they just knew that there was i wasn't grabbing things or i wasn't feeling hot and cold right and um went to doctors and doctors and doctors and tests and tests um for the first three years of my life and they would kept giving me the same answer we know he has something, but we don't know what. And um, that's what you want to hear, right? Yeah, it's but, great. Uh, great for your parents. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> doctors. Um, but uh, luckily, I met a gentleman who happened to be a Shriner um, through my grandmother. 
And he looked at me and was like, oh, does your grandson have cerebral palsy? And he goes, well, we see a lot of patients with cerebral palsy at this clinic. And um, it, it's up down the street. It's like four or five hours away drive um, from where we were living. And they're like, you should really take him there. They, they'll last shot, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. There's no, there's no harm. And within the first hour, I, uh, I was diagnosed and started treatment. Um, wow. physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, focusing on everything from fine gross motor skills to hand eye coordination and uh, braces and casting uh, for the first probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years of my life. Um, I was in cast six months out of the year and then braces for the other half. Was that to try and straighten yeah. your legs? straighten my feet out so yeah. there was a what i was called was a severe toe walker yeah so like my feet instead of bending this way would want to bend that way yeah and curl curl down and so through leg binding and feet binding um we were able to to train those muscles to be um to to be walk like a normal foot you know yeah um like flat pretty much versus curved and uh that through exercise, physical therapy, um, you know, we're able to harness it. And then sports, you know, sports are such a big part of my life um, in, in so many different capacities. You know, I played, I played football, but soccer here, you know, <laughs> um, uh, for, for six, seven seasons, six seasons. Oh, wow. And, um, and I, was, I, was, I was keeper, I was defender, I was center mid. I, I played played every aspect with cast and braces on both my legs. Wow. So I was a tank. Yeah, <laughs> unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. And this and is I an could... able body competition? So yeah, I, yeah. YMCA. YMCA, wow. you know, YMCA really never discriminated. Um, you know, I was very lucky I was very lucky to to have great physical therapists and um my my family was one of those people that um was a group that was like can't is a decision. You know, we all we all say we can't do something, and you know, we might not be able to do something uh, at right now, but through training and exercise and and time, we can learn how to do it. We can we can evolve to do it. It just takes that effort, and a lot of people just don't want to put in the effort because um, it hurts. It's hard. It's time consuming, and you're tired, and so it's like. Why am I gonna suffer anymore, right? Yeah. Why am I gonna? You know, I'm just gonna yeah. And so, luckily, um, I I had a family who said suffer more. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my mom, but for totally different reasons. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't even want to know. Um, I, I'm getting a look. Um, but uh, but so like through that, I was able to just harness. Um, my CP and you know uh, I, I don't really use um, braces which I probably should actually be in them right now yeah. my like my legs are so tight right now and I'm just like I just don't want to run <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's interesting so um, you obviously went through such heavy physiotherapy early do you know if you hadn't gone through that process, what your life and physical limitations, and I don't want to say limitations, no, might look like today, yeah. would you have played soccer? Could you be walking? Because I know you skateboard. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I think probably if I didn't have the physical therapy and, and, the, and the tools early on, which, which I'm a firm believer that if you want, if you if, start them young, yeah. You know, it, physical therapy for a kid sucks, especially for a baby, for someone four or three. Your child does not want to, yeah. but your child needs to. And that's why I don't think a lot of parents, not that they don't get it, but they just don't want to see their kid in pain yeah, that's and, true. and, and, and want to see them with leg immobilizers and, and screaming at night. You know, it's because cause they're spasming and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like you can't, there's only so many drugs that you can give a child. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and, but um but you know i would probably be something more like walt jr that yeah. that like with with the forearm crutches um that would probably be more on yeah. my speed and 
and um you know my arm my arm even now like if i'm if i'm sleeping like my arm will curl on me and i'm like yo i gotta fix that like, <laughs> yeah, i'm like yo i'm like yo hey guys <laughs> come on now <laughs> huh. Um, so you do love sport. In fact, in 2016, you commentated the Paralympics. I did. I did you at lucky. all get a chance to see any wheelchair tennis? That is a question from Dylan I Wilcott did. himself. I did. All right. I watched, I watched quite a bit of wheelchair tennis. Um, caught the finales on, mm. uh, on, on tennis. Um, I went to every sport. So yeah. like when it came when it came to like what I wanted to do was I didn't want to just stick to one sport I wanted to see everything that was happening mm -hmm. and uh, you know we were there for a month and some change and and the Brazilian people and the Rio the Rio locals were super open and and friendly and warm to us and we we're very lucky that we got to see so many things and you know I have to say the 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 Paralympics are literally the pinnacle of the human evolution when it comes to showing what we are truly capable of, you know, you know, Olympics are great, you know, all these professional sports and athletes are really, really great, but you're talking like hundreds of millions of dollars and, and, and just like all kinds of crazy things. But when it comes to the Paralympics, you don't really, yes, you have, you have money in that, but a lot of them come on their own free will because of the drive, because of the belief, because of the, the challenge and the true challenge of themselves. And they come in and they break world records. They yeah. break Olympian records. They, they, it's like they shatter them by like seconds. And yeah, it's like, they're like, oh, they complain that it's like, oh, it's because of the blades. No, it's because that dude trains 24 yeah. seven and lives on those things. Yeah. Like, like this is his existence. And, yeah. and I, I think it's so amazing um to see what we truly are capable of because yes anyone in the world can can go can go run them whatever right can go yeah. can go train and be this thing but there's a misconception with disability that we can't do that right that we have these limitations that we have these ideas of oh this is the best it's going to be for you mm. and and that's not accurate that's that's uh that's misinformation because having a disability allows you to not just adapt to your environment, but to create a new environment that includes inclusivity that allows evolution and growth for not just the physical construct, but the material world as well to environments, to buildings, to all these things. Um, if we keep this disability version of, of what we need for accessibility, not so much disability, but accessibility, you know, the possibilities are endless. It's, it's, not so much even about smashing records, it's about smashing the glass ceilings of what people perceive the human body can do. Hey, it's easy to run, but to try doing it with one leg, try doing it- Or no with, legs. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, ridiculous. Yo, man. Like there's, there's people with, the, with two blades on, like smashing like times and like even, even the, the hand cyclists, you know? Yeah. Like and and they're in wheelchair rugby. That's like, yo, you think rugby is a contact sport? Watch <laughs> wheel, wheelchair rugby, man. I know. That's Smash like smashing into each other. Yo, they can't feel their ankles. They don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> they're like, yeah. yo, I watched someone. I swear, I like they 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 broke their leg and it just kept on going. They're yeah. like, I'm like, yo, this Stop me back wild. in, coach. <laughs> right back in. <laughs> just make sure it's straight. <laughs> Now, RJ, um, we've actually met before. Now, this isn't something where I'm going to like spring this on you uh, and you're expected to know me. Or I, I, I do recognize you. I was, I've been trying to put it together. I'm glad you brought it up. Well, we met at the EMAs in Amsterdam a bunch of years ago. Now, we stayed at the coolest hotel of all time. Do you remember that hotel? That I do. It was like, like right off of a river. It was down the street from the EMAs. Yeah. Everyone was there. Like I checked in with Russell Brand Everybody. and Will Ferrell as Anchorman. It was just a crazy time to be alive. But we ended yeah. up after the event having a drink together in this little bar that was within the hotel. I've got a photo, which I'm going to show you. That's us. Oh my God. Yeah. That's oh, us dude, we, were having, we were having a great time. Look at that photo. We were <laughs> living our best lives. And we had a great chat and you're an awesome dude. And I went away just going, man, that Hajj is an absolute legend. But there was something that actually happened during that time. 
and when we were drinking where this drunk woman came up to you and we were having drinks and she goes, um, should you be drinking? Are you allowed to drink? <laughs> Do you get that a lot? Because I didn't know what to say at the time. You were so lovely. You're like, of course, I can you drink? Why can't I drink? You had this great response and like, she was quite nice about it. But do you get this ableism all the time? I mean, I yes and no. Hmm. And, and, you know, I don't really, I don't view that as ableism. I just view it as ignorance. Yeah. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's people don't know. Because it's like, oh, you have something. Like, your brain shouldn't be having alcohol. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's this there's this misconception of just because you have a disability makes you fragile. Mm. And, and, the, and, the, and that kind of makes people want to coddle you and, and protect you. And, and a lot of people want to be like, no, 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 you shouldn't drink or you shouldn't do these things or can you drive or, or like yeah. those types of questions. And it's like, yeah, like I, 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 I went through the test. I have a license. I have like these things. That it's like, what's what's the difference like you know yeah like maybe if i had like a liver malfunction or a kidney malfunction i probably shouldn't drink <laughs> yeah, but <that's> like <laughs> but like hey man there's only uh, i got enough brain cells i could spare a few <laughs> <laughs> i don't i've got less than you <laughs> i mean hey I, I actually i got less than you <laughs> okay Me, remember all right that's true <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously, we have to talk about um, acting and we'll get into Triumph as well. But of course, yes. we first came across you as uh, Walter White Jr. on Breaking Bad, a TV show that I've now watched through twice complete. Um, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Um, a lot of people might have thought that Walter White Jr. wasn't written in the script to have a disability, but that's false. It was actually CP was always going to be uh, Walter White Jr.'s disability. Can you talk about... Um, when you found out about the role and talking to was is it Vince yeah. Gilligan who wrote it? Vince Gilligan, yeah, yeah, Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad, also writer for X Files and Hancock and, and many other amazing shows and movies. Uh, he actually wrote my character in mind of a friend he had in college, who uh, sometime after college passed away um, from other complications, and uh, this was kind of a memory um, character in memory of him, and you know. It, it was really amazing when I got the role. I was I was 13 turning 14. And uh, I remember auditioning five times, four in Los Angeles and once in New Mexico. And, you know, the role really was, was me. It said dark hair, big eyebrows, and mild <laughs> cerebral palsy. And I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so it really, like, was one of those things where it's like, I, this is my role. And so I went in with that mentality and um, just kind of, um, I mean, put myself out there. Uh, luckily at the time, not luckily, but um, Sharon Bialy, the casting director, um, uh, I think it was either her or her assistant had crutches because they broke their leg skiing right. and they handed me the crutches and I used them for the scene. And it, Bang. Here, I, here I am 15, 17 years later um you know I, i'm so lucky for what breaking bad gave me because i wouldn't be talking to you today i wouldn't have been to the to the amas and you know what was amazing about that i got to give an award to Katy perry you did. um and it was it was surreal and meet ron burgundy i didn't meet um i, knew, uh, I didn't meet will ferrell either i didn't I meet will ferrell i only met ron burgundy me and it was the most wildest thing and like and, and not many people can say that yeah. and I'm, I'm very happy for that and you know like with the Paralympics as well, working for Channel 4 and the GB team, because I wasn't representing the Americans. Yeah. I, I actually was doing, I was doing Great Britain and um, and working for them. And I wouldn't have ever had this if it wasn't for Breaking Bad, for the notoriety and the impact that the show had in, in everyone's life and including mine. It was a once in a lifetime thing. And, you know, I'm very lucky. Um, I, I still act, I still shoot movies. I'm, I'm still working in different capacities. And, uh, and, you know, it, it's a really surreal business because I didn't imagine myself being in this business. Uh, mm. And I, I couldn't now imagine myself not being in it. And, and the thing about, obviously, this role was meant for you with the physical features and traits. But um, when we're talking about the severity of CP, you did have to act up. I did. Um, 
your level of CP with the crutches, etc. Um, well, re- really, it was more or less just the crutches. You know, I okay. um, you know, I do have a stutter, and I work very hard on on not having a stutter. So really, I just let that shit flow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just let that to get rid of the vocal coach for a few years. Yeah. No, yeah, scrap it. Just scrap <laughs> all all the hard work and articul articulation and everything about it, and like oh. all the good, the 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 good uh the good and things, um uh, with the uh 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 what 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 and I got yeah. you covered. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, did you get any feedback from the disability community after the release of season one and even through to today? And what was the response of people who? might have had CP up on the screen. You know, Dylan always talks about never having people, uh, seeing people when he was growing up in wheelchairs, unless it was in a, a victim of a road crash commercial. You know, that's yeah. what, it's what he talks about. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Walt Jr. was received very well by the community. And, and, I, and I think it's probably one of the most well-received roles when it comes to the disability community um, on representation and just, a character being a character, not not being a disabled character. Because yes, yes, Walt Jr. had CP, but he wasn't disabled. Yeah, like that's that's the biggest thing that that I feel is so important when we see characters on television that represent individuals with with disabilities. Is their disability isn't what makes them a character. Yeah. It's who they are. It's where they came from. And it's how they got there through determination and strength. And that's what makes them so strong and so independent. And, you know, a lot of times we'll see on shows where it's about a character. It's about a character with disabilities overcoming adversity and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah. and you know, that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not reality. That's a, that's a show. Hmm. That's showmanship. That's, oh, look at this. Look at what we're doing here. Like versus here's a character. And this character is going through this challenge with his family. And yeah, he has CP, but it's about the family. Yeah. It's not about physical therapy or overcoming or, or even, even curing, curing. I, I hear curing a lot when, mm-hmm. I, when I talk about disability. Cure, we have to cure disability. We have to cure like, like I, I, I don't understand what people are trying to cure. I'm like, yeah, let's cure cancer. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's, yeah, that's let's, right. like, let's cure like disease. Let's cure things like that. Let's, you, you don't need to cure disabilities. You need to, pro- you need to understand them, provide opportunities for them. And, and really, really that's actually it. Cause if mm. you just do those two basic needs, possibilities are endless. I think there also needs to be, and hopefully this podcast is part of that process, but, um, you know, uh, then there also needs to be education for able-bodied people that you yeah. th- th- there's this weird empathy oh. and sympathy that people feel towards somebody that has a disability when most of the time they're looking out, living a bigger and yeah. better life than most. Well, I think, the, like, education is part of it, but I don't think it's specifically education is the key factor. I think yeah. more exposure. Yeah. More exposure with individuals with disabilities and and just because a lot of times and we've seen this for for hundreds of years where when you have a disability, they 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 put you away. They they like send you to a clinic. They it was it used to be a cliff, then it was a clinic, and then it was a hospital, and now it's like <laughs> It's, it's all right let's send them in an apartment and keep them in their own place yeah <laughs> like that, that that's where we've evolved now and it's now it's like okay well i don't just want to be locked in a room and fed fed through the door checks right yeah i want i want to have a job i want to i want to provide opportunities i want to be a citizen like people want those things and i think a lot of times people go oh you just want to like you just want to sit on the couch right you just want to you just want to be disabled no the the disability labor label is there but i want to be part of a community i want to be part of a growth and i think that's where the misconception is yeah. and and the disconnect is from the able-bodied community to the individuals that have disabilities um is that understanding of we just want a job we just want to work we just don't want to have to spend all our excess money to to play a sport or do something because you don't see it viable. <laughs> That's true. 
Um, what about when we talk about, you're talking about opportunities there and work. Uh, how do you feel when you do see as an actor, able-bodied actors getting roles as disabled people? So I, I have a different take on this. You know, a lot of people get angry mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like, I don't care. Um, I, I, I do, I don't either. And I do care. And I, I think the big thing though is it's not about able body actors playing disabled roles. It's about disabled body actors, disabled individuals not being even able to get into the room to audition for those roles. Mm. Not even having the opportunity. Like, yes, I understand that we need to have more representation of disabled actors in mainstream media, right? We need that. It's a great, uh, it's great for kids. It's great for adults. It's great for people who aren't around disability to see the real world. You know, individuals with disabilities make up 15% of the global population. And to be honest, it's actually probably a lot more because a lot of people have disabilities and don't even like they're not even on the paper, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I, I think it's important to have that representation, but I, I think that I can't compete against a Brian Cranston. Hmm. I can't compete against a Jamie Foxx or a, or a Jim Carrey. That's just, no one can. Like, no, that, that's like, it, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So like when I have someone like Jim Carrey play Forrest Gump, like that was my closest thing to to seeing myself as as a kid and growing up, you know. And I used to get I used to get called when I was on the soccer field. I used to hear "Run for us, run" all the time because you would have been and in braces. I would, yeah. And I, you know, I didn't look at it as a negative. Yeah. I looked at it as a positive. That holy shit, I'm Forrest Gump. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a table tennis bat. I'm gonna be good at ping I'll go walk. I'm gonna walk the country. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um, but but that was my thing, and you're like it's it's hard, and I can't imagine because even now, they they wouldn't make a Forrest Gump movie, they wouldn't make a, a Ray Charles movie the same way, and and those pieces of cinema are are historic in so many different avenues because they were groundbreaking at that time. Um, but now we're a little bit further in the future. Yeah. And we have the ability to get the, the best content in the world. So why are we subpar? Like why why do we why do we keep falling into the trap of subpar media or or that basis of like, oh, we're just gonna keep sticking the formula with a million dollar follower and call it a day versus hiring an actor that, that no one knows but's really great. It it's it's a bad business but it's part that's that's part of the challenge to overcome it but i think it's changing uh for the positive and i think with with zooms and and skypes and all these things that people who didn't have a voice before with social media have the voice now and that changed everything and it's just utilize your voice put yourself out there control your social media put positive messaging Harness your audience and just audition. Because, you know, the biggest thing is, is I didn't think I would get Breaking Bad. I auditioned five times over six months. You know, I go on 30. I, I Not as much as I used to because it's tiring. But I used to go on like 100 auditions, 200 auditions a year. Do you know how many I would get? Yeah. None. Like none to zero. Yeah. None. Yeah. And, and it wasn't because of my disability. That's how the industry works. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of people that are vying for one position. And so you can't beat yourself up. You can't blame anything about who you are or what you look like or how you are. Um, it, it, it's irrelevant because that's part of the industry. It's just you got to just keep paving and pushing forward. And when you see something that you're like, this isn't right, speak up about it. Say something about it and, and make that stand for not just yourself, but for your community. Um, if you, you know, thought of yourself as Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump, you know, in those braces in early day, and did, did you, uh, did you ever find your Jenny? I, I, I found, I found some Jennies. Okay, Jennies. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, over the years, you know, it's yeah. So, yeah life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you never know which one you get. <laughs> you never know. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, <laughs> talking about uh, Triumph, of course, the movie, uh, everyone can get on the digital platforms right now. It does tackle, you know, and I've only been able to see the trailer so far, but it does hey. tackle bullying. Um, it, was that a part of your growing up? Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I had a whole other joke in my head that I just had to swallow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I, um, you know, I dealt with bullies. Uh, you know, everyone, this is the thing. Everyone deals with bullies. I did. I, I, anyone you talk to, either you know you did or something happened around you, you know? No one in this world goes through life without having to face an adversary or, or two or three or five or a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I had my hand broken um, in a, in a not, it wasn't really a confrontation, but it wasn't like not a confrontation. Okay. Um, okay. It was a heart, uh, it was a sussing out whether this was going to be a confrontation. Yeah, and then and then when like the whole, then when the hand broke, it kind of ended. Yeah, <laughs> like it was it was playing sports. I was playing basketball. Someone got mad, but um, and I didn't know you can kick in basketball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <Huh. laughs> oh, that's a foul. Technical huh. foul. I guess I <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. I thought it was all part of the game. But anyways, uh, you know, and and I and when I would do track and run, I had a kid. I had the same kid that would come up and he would, jet, like, grab, I start. I had to stop wearing hoodies because they oh. would come up and they pull me off the ground with my hoodie. So I like, go flying feet first up, um, and and stuff like that. But then, like, I was very lucky that I had a marine grandfather. Um, and, and again, keep in mind, I, I grew up with can't, isn't an option, you know, can't a decision. If you choose, if you can't, if you can't stand up for yourself, you're choosing not to like, you know, and so <laughs> fight fire with fire. So, well, it, it's not fight fire with fire. It's really ask the question, like not so much confront them, but go like, why do you want to do this? Like, what are you trying to achieve out of this? And I know that's very hard for like an eight-year-old to say, but it's going to catch that other eight-year-old off guard. And you say, <laughs> what's your problem? Why are you doing this to me? And they said, because I want to. And it's like, no, no, no. What's your real reason? And and then you find out that more often than not, the bullies are being abused. Not at school, but at home, in a living situation. And, and not even just abused, but just like hard parents financially like you know there's a lot of things where people just don't get the love that they that they need and they get bad examples and i find um having a disability you know there's been studies that show um having a disability makes you three times um likely to be bullied um primarily a physical disability and it it people look at disability as a as a weakness as a sickness as something that we have to cure or, or overcome and to me it's so much more than that and it's so much more viable it's knowledge it's power it's understanding of not just this world but your own body of what you're capable of and if you can convey that in a way to someone that can that that is willing to understand it you can change so many people's lives by doing that and, you know bullies have their own disability you know and, and that's a social disability. That's something that like they can't convey their social and they usually don't have friends or other bully friends. And then that just breeds a toxic environment and no one's going to help them because they're bullies. Mm. But if you can convey to them and, and try to reason, and I know that's like a, some people are unreasonable, um, but if you never try, you never know. And for me, I find if you're willing to put yourself out there and if, and if the straw hasn't broken the camel's back yet, confront them yourself, but talk to a parent, talk to your mom, talk to your dad, talk to your uncle, whoever that, whoever that figure may be that you can confide in, talk to them, ask them, what should I do? And, you know, maybe they say, yeah, talk to them. Or maybe they say, sock them in the jaw. Like you're going to, you're going to get two results, you know? Um, and, uh, and, you know, I find talking to teachers and, and uh, it, it's, it's important 
to to be able to be open. But uh, it's it's hard, you know. Thanks for sharing that, man. Um, yeah, before we go, I've got a couple of things I want to rattle through. One of them is when it. you type in RJ Mitty, it comes up with the internet's most asked questions. Have you ever done this on yourself? I have not. Great. So these are when people type in RJ Mitty. Do you know how like Google tries to complete yeah, the yeah, sentence? Yeah. Okay. Let's go through <laughs> the internet's most asked questions about you. Is RJ Mitty really handicapped? Yes, I, I am really handicapped. <laughs> We've covered that. Is Done. RJ Mitty married? No, I am not married. How much is RJ Mitty worth? I don't know. I got two pennies in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> not that. What is RJ Mitty's next role? Uh, I, I have a bunch of roles, but but really promoting Triumph, my mm -hmm. my movie out right now, because I'm I'm very I mean that's taken five years of my life, <laughs> mm. so I'm I'm very happy. Uh, I have another movie called Isaac I just shot. Uh, very excited about that. We have another week or two weeks or a month of filming, whenever mm -hmm. they decide. Uh, and then I have another movie called The Oak Room, and uh, actually, uh, being in Australia, right? Yeah. You're in Australia. Uh, I, I'm in Australia at the moment. No, uh, but but via uh, yeah, this, by Zoom. I have a movie called Standing Up for Sunny, which is an Australian-based film uh, with an, an amazing um, Philippa North um, Northwest. I know Philippa Northwest. My old radio producer Yo, is her sister. She's my Jenny. Oh, she's your Jenny. <laughs> she's the Jenny man. She's the Jenny I never got. No way. I had to go to war. <laughs> no way that is crazy yeah. yes that, I, I, she used to come into my radio studio she was on home and away for a long yeah, time was. in australia yeah, she is yes yeah. she is amazing and a delight That's no cool. but uh but great film very very ha happy about it um great director great producers and uh and we had a lot of love in it and you know australia was great and nice. i love i love the country you have a great country there good people uh i've been to melbourne I've, I've I've hung out there, so I, I enjoy it. We know you've been in Melbourne because you didn't call it Melbourne. That's how we know Melbourne. you've been here. Melbourne, yeah. yeah. Nice. And the last question uh, the internet wants to know is, how much does RJ Mitty actually like breakfast? You know, I'm hit and miss. You know, I like <laughs> breakfast. Um, I like breakfast between two and four a.m. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Again, okay, it's yeah. an early breakfast. The early breakfast, okay. you know, late dinner, you know. Yeah, sure. You haven't been um, to bed yet, but still want some eggs. <laughs> yo, hey, you know it, man. But no, but I, I used to really, I used to be a big breakfast guy, you know. And I would do, I, I was a bacon sandwich, BLT mm. guy, like, like hardcore, right? Bacon, bacon, bacon's my blood, man. Mm -hmm. Someone call a doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um. But, you know, I lately, I'm getting old and I'm yeah. doing the reverse thing. So instead of going to bed early, I go to bed early and sleep through the day. Okay. You are. <laughs> you're napping. When, when you're napping, you're old. Yo, yo, I nap. I hardcore nap, man. I'm, um, I'm, so we should, should, give some, should give some context to that. Of course, Walter White Jr. on Breaking Bad yes. was sort of famous for... Why, what, why was that written in the script? Is there so, a reason why breakfast was so no, important? No. Um, so this is how breakfast kind of infused its way into my life. Okay. Um, every major scene that Skylar, Walt, or Junior was at started in the morning at the breakfast table. Yeah. So every pivotal uh, morning on the show was always around the breakfast table. And it just kind of kept escalating until so one day someone dubbed me the breakfast king. And... and <laughs> And, and it's stuck it's stuck yeah it's stuck. so when vince was writing that he wasn't deliberately going this is going to be a key theme breakfast it just kept repeating that that living room kitchen scene just was so just, pivotal in so many big scenes it just happened that way and it just evolved into something and you know breakfast is the most important meal of the day so i that mean hey <laughs> teaching the kids teaching the kids <laughs> And the last thing that we do, RJ, is a thing called a bowl of uncomfortable. Now, we put up uh, future guests once we lock them in and we ask our audience on socials, uh, what question do you want to ask? 
And we have, I think, all the ball of uncomfortable the question they wouldn't be comfortable asking you in person, but they want to know the answer to. All right. <laughs> this one is actually an interesting topic, but you are so well spoken on this, you're going to knock it out of the park. The movie oh, Triumph great. looks to just be disability inspiration porn. Guy with cerebral palsy can lift large weights, defies bullies, makes the unthinkable sports team, and gets the girl. Why should I take my child with CP to see this film and risk him seeing that it's not a triumph, but as a kick to the face? Um, I could tell you how it ends, and I would kind of ruin it. Yeah, okay, um, don't do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, yes, there is inspiration porn aspects to it. And, and you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's hard to not have a story, a lead character with a disability um, that's just a, a, a story about a real event not be inspirational porn because it's so inspiring. But, you know, in Triumph, my character doesn't win um, really anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, like he, he, he does face all those things, um, but he doesn't really win. Uh, and, and his win is in, in his trial. And I think there is like avenues of where it's important for kids to see a film like this, not because of the, the inspirational aspects, but just because of it's not it's not the content that you're going to get in the mainstream media. It's not the content you're going to get from inspirational porn. It's not going to, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be very different and it's going to be hard in some areas and, and soft in others. And I find there's many different avenues um, when it comes to what this character is. And, you know, we didn't want it to just be like, oh, inspire, inspire, inspire. Um, and so I think with how we made the, the project, how he ended and the character ended really kind of mellows out the inspirational aspect. But, but really, this film is supposed to be an inspirational film. This film is supposed to inspire people to get and do things and, and be a part of your life and, and face your challenges and face your dilemmas and look at it head on. But, um, but also, this he doesn't win. Hmm. And, um, and it's funny just, as well. Like, I can understand yeah. where this mom has come from, and she sent this on yeah. Facebook. But uh, it's also like, what's the alternative? Okay, he doesn't lift the weights, he doesn't make the team, yeah. and he loses. Is that a good movie you want to show your kids? I mean, like, yeah. And, and you know what? I want to ruin it. I'm just going to ruin the ending. I'm, okay. call, I'm just going to call it a day. He does not win any of his matches. He, he just doesn't because it's not real. He's not a real wrestler. He's inspiring to be. Mm. And it's his last year. So how, but, and this is something that's not just supposed to relate to individuals with disabilities, but to everyone that was in that last year of high school. How many football stars? Do you know that I could have made it into the NFL yeah. and they're 50 and 60 and 70 years old that never got their dream. And, and imagine the people that never even get close to even practicing or playing. And so I, I think that this film is kind of a testament to that. And mm. it's not just for people with disabilities, but just for people in general. Yeah. And, and I think it's also important to remember it's based on a true story of Michael as well. So this yeah. isn't like, some able-bodied writer making up a story that he thinks inspirational. It's based on no. someone's true events. Correct. Yeah. Which and, and the thing is, is like it's hard to not inspire without being like one of those inspired because there's so many people that mm. are trying to inspire people. But really, sadly, it's all about money. Um, mm. You know, I, I've tried really hard to be a motivational person, but not make money my motivation. And, and not allow myself to be watered down or dwindled down to just being this pigeonholed person of, I'm a person with cerebral palsy. You should support X, Y, Z because of this. And it's yeah. like, I, I like, look, we, we need a lot of that and we need awareness. But it's, it's hard not to be that because society wants to make you that. Yeah. Society wants to make you that disabled example of, oh, look, he's a success. So everyone should look at this poster child, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you not let that define you? How do you, how do you focus on that? And that's a very hard thing for a lot of people, but it just takes time. 
And um, and if she doesn't, and, and to that mom, if if she doesn't like um, like like that, and want some more hard hitting content about a guy with a disability, check out Standing Up for Sunny. It's a rom com. So. <laughs> <laughs> you give it. See, that's the great thing about you. You've got a body of work. <laughs> um, well, it's been how long's it been? Eight years since we've caught up since this infamous photo in Amsterdam. So wild. So crazy. So man. The 23rd of November, I posted that in 2013. That was you know, crazy. I'll remember that. Like that that weekend, it was probably one of like the highlights of mm-hmm. like my life when it came down to just Amsterdam, the environment, the people, the work, and, and being able to like present Katy Perry and, and meet like, yo, again, we met Ron Burgundy. We did. Like, like yeah. I, I, I think I, actually where is this Sorry. photo? I do even th- look, here's my photo interviewing Ron Burgundy. Wait, let me see. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I don't think people understand he was not Will Ferrell. No, like, 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 like that, that was like, he would not respond to Will. Like he nope. would not, you, he wouldn't take photos with you. Or like, if you said, Will, 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 he would like, hurt. <laughs> no, he checked into the hotel, not, no one filming, no one within Puppy's team Shoot. as Ron Burgundy. His hotel name was Ron Burgundy. It was wild. Yeah, it was crazy. It was one of the best weekends. And uh, I'm glad we got to have a couple of whiskeys that night. Yeah. And thank you very much for uh, sharing time. that experience hey. with me, RJ. My pleasure, man. It's great. Full circle, man. Full, Full circle, circle, brother. Appreciate it. And uh, this is this was actually a, a, a much better time than I could have ever anticipated. Thanks so much for well, coming on the podcast. Hey, well, next time we're going to have to get your cooler co-host on board. When That's he's right. Not winning, when, he, when he's win, winning Wimbledon. Yeah, I mean, what a loser. I mean, apart from the fact he's probably going to win his sixth one. (laughs) So wild. Well, congrats to him. Please send my love and great to see you, man. You too, man. To everyone listening or watching, Triumph is out now on all digital platforms. RJ Mitty, the star. Thanks for catching up, man. See you later.